Greetings. My name is Konstantin Monastirsky. I am a medical writer, performance nutrition consultant, and an expert in forensic nutrition. Unlike orthodox nutrition, which promotes healthy foods, forensic nutrition studies why supposedly healthy foods make people thick. Dietary fiber is a good case in point. My book Fiber Menace has stirred a huge controversy among experts recently because it describes how and why fiber causes constipation, hemorrhoids, irritable bowel syndrome, diverticular disease, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, colon cancer, and contributes to 50 plus hours of digestive, endocrine, colorectal, and genitourinary disorders. In other words, dietary fiber, presumably a health food, is actually screwing up your health big time. And this is exactly what I meant by picturing a cereal bowl full of brass screws on this cover. And yes, I realize that you're very, very skeptical. How can Mr. Monastirsky all this be true when everyone is telling me otherwise? Well, not long ago, everyone was recommending hormone replacement therapy and Vioxx, and a lot of people end up dead. So I can't answer for everyone. I can, however, present you with facts and you make your own conclusions. I'll start with the widely promoted lie that fiber prevents colon cancer. This quote is from the Harvard School of Public Health website. For years, Americans have been told to consume a high fiber diet to lower the risk of colon cancer, mainly on the basis of results from relatively small studies. Larger and better designed studies have failed to show a link between fiber and colon cancer. This one of all people from the United States Federal Drug Administration. FDA has concluded from this review that the totality of the publicly available scientific evidence not only demonstrates lack of significant scientific agreement as to the validity of a relationship between dietary fiber and colorectal cancer, but also provides strong evidence that such a relationship does not exist. On top of this damning evidence, Fiber Menace lists a number of mainstream studies that actually demonstrate the connection between fiber consumption and polyps which precede colon cancer. But the really bad news doesn't stop there. If you're counting on regular colonoscopies to take out these polyps, don't hold your breath. They had a colonoscopy already, some even had two colonoscopies, and all of a sudden they were coming up as cancer, explained Dr. Sean to the New York Times reporter, and then added wistfully, wow, I thought a colonoscopy was supposed to prevent all this. What else can I add? Another fiber-related lie concerns breast cancer. In fact, it's a complete opposite. A high-fiber diet actually doubles the risk of breast cancer. As you know, natural fiber is an indigestible carbohydrate. It is found in fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, legumes, along with five to 10 times as many of digestible carbohydrates. Eat at least 25 to 30 grams of dietary fiber each day, preferably from whole grains, fruits, vegetables, and legumes, recommends the American Heart Association and pretty much everyone else. But if you follow this misguided advice literally, along with fiber, you will also unwittingly ingest up to 300 grams of digestible carbohydrates each and every day. And that is before adding up all other carbs consumed throughout the same day with soft drinks, juices, milk, side dishes, snacks, and desserts. So what it has to do with breast cancer? Well, when the United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the American Institute for Cancer Research studied diets high in carbohydrates, here is what they found out. A high percentage of calories from carbohydrates, but not from fat, was associated with increased breast cancer risk. In fact, the association was so bad, 220% increase in breast cancer for those who were getting over 60% of their calories from carbs, they canceled the study. Not surprisingly, breast cancer death in the United States are among the highest in the world. The next popular lie that fiber reduces the risk of heart disease is just as outrageous. It is based on yet another intentional lie that fiber lowers cholesterol. Actually, it doesn't, not a tiny bit. 
The slate of hand only works in combination with a very low fat diet that lowers cholesterol anyway with or without fiber. Even then, the reduction is so small it is absolutely meaningless. And guess what? When the scientists investigated this reduction among women, they found out that it's mostly good HDL cholesterol that goes down, not the bad one. Women who follow American Heart Association guidelines for lowering their serum cholesterol may actually be increasing their risk of heart disease, wrote Dr. Alan Gabby for the Townsend Letter for Doctors and Patients. The next lie is really sweet, a claim that fiber somehow may protect you from diabetes. Just consider this outlandish recommendations by the Jocelyn Diabetes Center, an affiliate of the Harvard University Medical School, which also claims to be the world's largest diabetes research center, diabetes clinic, and provider of diabetes education. Here is what they advise to their unsuspecting patients. Fiber intake should be approximately 50 grams daily if that amount can be tolerated. A minimum of 20, 35 grams per day is recommended. So let me ask you the simple question. How can fiber in fruits and vegetables, a carbohydrate along with a lot of sugars and starches, protect you from sugar diabetes when even the village idiot knows that sugars and starches in excess are the number one cause of non-insulin dependent diabetes? From all the lies about fiber, this one is the most obscene for two reasons. First, Indigestible fiber is the primary cause of juvenile diabetes because a child's duodenum is so tiny it gets easily clogged with fiber. The resulting obstruction blocks pancreatic and bile ducts, which in turn causes pancreatic inflammation, damages insulin-secreting cells, and forever ruins the lives of children and their parents. Second, fiber, particularly in the insane amounts recommended by the Jocelyn Center, dramatically increases the damage from adult type 2 diabetes by interfering with daily measurements of blood glucose levels and by blocking the assimilation of medication and essential nutrients. Besides, this is a case when one hand doesn't know what other one is doing. Just consider this quote from the Harvard School of Public Health website. Fiber intake has also been linked with the metabolic syndrome, a constellation of factors that increase the chances of developing heart disease and diabetes. So much for the vaunted Harvard University leading edge science. The next widely popular lie concerns obesity. Everyone knows that fiber is broadly recommended for weight loss because supposedly it reduces appetite. Again, not true, according to the Human Nutrition Research Center on Aging at Tufts University. Fermentable and non-fermentable fiber supplements did not alter hunger, satiety, or body weight in a pilot study of men and women consuming self-selected diets. In fact, it's a complete opposite. Fiber-rich food expands the stomach by its sheer weight, volume, and water absorbency. This, in turn, raises the threshold of satiety, stimulates appetite, and makes you much hungrier the next time around. And that's even without reminding you yet again that anytime you consume fiber, you also consume a ton of carbs, the mother of all weight gain. Another popular lie related to weight loss claims that fiber has zero net carbs. Not true by a country mile. According to the Dietary Reference Intake Manual, it's a nutritional Bible published by Uncle Sam National Academies Press, fiber fills you with calories just like any other food. Current data indicates that yield is in the range of 1.5 to 2.5 calories per gram of consumed fiber. So if you consume daily 35 grams of recommended fiber, that adds up to over 20 to 30,000 extra calories in a single year. Not exactly net zero.